Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny had its premiere in Los Angeles last night, and on board were all of the folks that you would expect for such an A-list event. What you're about to see is a recording of last night's event, and in one of the most hilarious moments I've ever seen with quite a heavy dose of schadenfreude, well, Steven Spielberg completely forgets about Kathleen Kennedy. Well, folks, welcome back. Another great day here at Valiant Renegade. It's good to see everybody out there once again. And if you are like one of the many folks watching this video, not yet subscribed to this channel, please take a moment and turn that little red subscribe button to gray. Hit that like button. Hit that notification bell. Share this sucker out on the social medias. And of course, please do leave a comment before you head out the door today. Obviously, Kathleen Kennedy has been a topic of conversation here on Valiant Renegade, along with many other channels on YouTube for quite some time. Her collapse of the Star Wars franchise has been something to behold, at least something to be terrified of. And we've talked many times over the years about how Kathleen Kennedy, when she was working way back in the day with folks like the ones you see on stage here, her husband, Frank Marshall, on the far left, Kathy next to him, and then, of course, the great George Lucas next to him, Steven Spielberg, and then finally off to the right, you see Harrison Ford. See, when Kathleen Kennedy worked with people like Spielberg and Lucas and Richard Donner and Robert Zemeckis and many of these other great, talented, creative minds throughout Hollywood's history, well, the movies have turned out great. But of course, when Kathleen Kennedy was given the keys to the Lucasfilm kingdom and she was running the show and she was in charge of making all the ultimate creative decisions, well, we see how that turned out. Steven Spielberg previously has made statements about Kathleen Kennedy where, let's say, he didn't pull too many punches. Effectively saying during an interview that Kathleen Kennedy was always the one in the room that came up with the worst ideas. I'm paraphrasing, but not by terribly much. And this was from last night at the Los Angeles premiere of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. And Steven Spielberg had a few kind words for three key people without whom he said Indiana Jones would not exist. There are three indispensable people without whom none of us would be here tonight. Three people. And that starts with the person who created Indiana Jones, George Lucas. <laughs> the person who is Indiana Jones, Harrison Ford. <laughs> and the person who... Now, as you may have noticed, Kathleen Kennedy was applauding the introduction of both Mr. Lucas and Mr. Ford, but Steven Spielberg had one person left to thank. George Lucas. <laughs> Kathy Claps. The person who is Indiana Jones, Harrison Ford. <laughs> Kathy Claps. And the person who is the glue to all five of these films. The person who is the glue to all five of these films. Well, surely at this point, look at Kathy must be thinking, well, He's going to say my name. Yeah, she's been around since Raiders of the Lost Ark, and she's the only one other than Ford himself, really, and of course the person he's about to introduce, that have actually been there for each and every film. Now with this fifth one coming out under the Disney banner. They gave us all of our rhythm and all of our melody, the great maestro, John Williams. <laughs> Look at her face. No applause. No applause from Kathy. She stands there. Frank is already running out the door. Frank Marshall, let's go, let's leave. <laughs> now look, Spielberg could have said the four people. He could have said five. He, he, could have, he could have gone down a list here. He could have included Kathleen Kennedy in that thanks, that personal thanks. She's standing five feet away from him. It's not as if he doesn't know that she's right there. Steven Spielberg just decided to ignore Kathleen Kennedy completely for Indiana Jones. <laughs> Rhythm and all of our melody, the great maestro, John Williams. Just nothing, nothing. Kathy is standing there dead, dead. And now she's, okay, let's just walk George off. Frank's gone. 
There's a lot of people out there that might assume that this was just a big nothing burger, and I can completely understand that. But the fact is, having known already what Steven Spielberg has commented on Kathleen Kennedy's effective creative abilities in the past, it seems to me that that was more deliberate on Steven Spielberg's part than maybe just a mere oversight. I've never gotten the impression that Spielberg has much respect for Kathleen Kennedy's professional prowess in Hollywood, although she does obviously get quite a bit of accolades. But again, as I stated before, it's one of those things that uh, she's enjoyed more because she has attached herself to very, very talented writers and directors out there. She's always been in the right place at the right time. And her husband, of course, being Frank Marshall, well, that put her in the right position to be where she is today. Now, of course, that was no good for the fans, and Star Wars is what it is, but Indiana Jones looks like it's going to be Kathy's final flop. Lord knows what's going to happen from here, because there's really nothing left at Lucasfilm to mine to put into theaters, or at least nothing that audiences seem to want to see. If the projections for Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny hold up, it's going to be one of the worst blockbuster openings for a film of that stature, especially when you consider its $300-plus million production budget. This is a film that's going to have to reach somewhere close to a billion dollars globally just to break even. And as of right now, it doesn't look like it's going to come anywhere close. And of course, in other recent news, there were interesting issues with delays due to the writer strike we talked about in a previous video with the Marvel slate. But Star Wars was not immune to those delays. And one has to wonder, with recent news being reported from some of the Hollywood trades, that Kathleen Kennedy's contract negotiation, which is due to expire next year in 2024, around October, they're going to start renegotiations on that this year in August. No surprise, about a month after Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny releases. And with those Star Wars movie delays, might that give people like Bob Iger and Alan Bergman just enough to push her out the door into retirement? Of course, she'll never be fired, as I've stated many, many times in the last couple of years. She's never going to be marched out and humiliated. But she probably will be encouraged to take her retirement now that she is roughly 70 years old. And delaying the Star Wars films may just be the impetus that Disney needs to start trying to fix Lucasfilm. Now, no word on who would take it over if she were to retire. But then again, that's Disney's problem at this point. Something has to be done. And of course, we've already seen what Kathleen Kennedy's prowess in terms of production management is. It doesn't exist. Three out of the five Star Wars films that Disney has produced have gone radically over budget because of mismanagement, both in operational and financial decisions, by the Lucasfilm Company and namely Kathleen Kennedy. And Disney is probably right to be very concerned at this point, even though they know they need to get new Star Wars content into theaters. Having Kathleen Kennedy manage those productions is probably a bad idea. They probably don't want to see another three films get shot two and three times before hitting theaters and running up outrageous expenses beyond belief. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Did you enjoy this one? Did you did you get a little smile on your face when Spielberg did that? I did. But let me know what you're thinking. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe. And until next time, take care.